everyone, I am Hamlata, a PhD student in University of Saskatchewan. Topic of my presentation is Metagenomic Analysis of Intestinal Microbiome in Broiler Chickens, Developing Clinical and Subclinical Necrotic Enteritis. I will briefly go through the background of necrotic enteritis, followed by our objective 1, its methodology, results and conclusion, followed by objective 2 in similar manner. Necrotic enteritis primarily affect broiler chickens of 2 to 5 weeks of age. Once disease established, it persists in the flock for 5 to 10 days. Clinically, birds will show a severe depression with ruffled feathers and often brown foamy diarrhea with sudden increase in mortality which can go up to 2 to 50 percent. Necrotic enteritis is caused by Clostridium perfringens type A, C and G. It secretes a wide range of enzymes and exotoxins. For example, mucolytic enzymes, which includes different types of sialidases, and these help in breaking of mucous layer of intestine, followed by membrane disrupting toxins, which is alpha toxin, followed by pore forming toxins, which includes mainly NetB and TPL. Sometimes it also secretes tight junction disintegrating toxins, which is CPE. C. perfringens secretes wide range of exotoxins, it requires multiple predisposing factors to establish in the host. C. perfringens lacks amino acid synthesis machinery, so if chickens fed with high protein diet, for example fish meal, these undigested proteins and amino acids are again utilized by C. perfringens to divide. Another important factor is stress, which mainly include the viral agents. Across Canada, IBDV is the most critical one as 52% of chicken farms are affected with IBDV. In addition, the coccidiosis, where this protozoal parasite completes its life cycle in the intestine, when it releases a sexual stage, it led to physical damage and loss of hemorrhages. In results, these plasma proteins are utilized by C. perfringent to divide, and once it starts dividing, it releases bactericins, which are the toxic compound which suppress the growth of other bacteria and led to microbiome dysbiosis. Crossly, there will be diffuse acute necrosis of the mucosa of the intestine and in histopathology there will be coagulative necrosis of the tips of the villi uh, of the intestine. Necrotic enteritis led to severe economic and production losses to broiler poultry industry. In terms of overweight gain, increased feed conversion ratio means birds will eat more and gain less with increased mortality which can go up to 2 to 50 percent. Necrotic enteritis cost around 5 to 6 billion US dollar every year to poultry industry and these losses will keep on increasing as most of the countries including Canada has voluntary withdraw the use of in-feed prophylactic antibiotics. Chicken farmers of Canada have voluntarily withdrawn the use of category 1 and category 2 antibiotics already in year 2018. So they are planning to withdraw category 3 antibiotics in near future. Therefore, there is an imminent need to find alternative preventive strategies against necrotic enteritis. Therefore, we hypothesize, as observed in Europe, withdrawal of prophylactic antibiotics use would result in re-emergence of pathogenic strains of bacteria, including C. perfringens and Canadian poultry industry. Therefore, alternative to antibiotics as well as effective preventive strategies against necrotic enteritis should be rapidly developed. Therefore, our objective is to develop a necrotic enteritis disease model to study its pathogenesis and preventive strategies. And second objective is to study intestinal microbiome associated with C. perfringens infection. To achieve our objective to develop the necrotic enteritis disease model, we started with the testing of different field isolates of necrotic enteritis. We have performed conventional PCR for isolate selection for our challenge studies. Total field isolate tested were 57, which all were collected from different parts of Canada. Toxin gene typing was performed on total 8 gene, which include both major and minor toxin genes present in C. perfringens. For PCR results, we were able to detect different toxin genes present in the field isolates. The picture in the left represents the isolates with NetB toxin gene, while in the right represents the isolates which has TPL toxin gene. We have found seven different toxin gene combinations in these isolates, which include both major and minor toxin genes. And based on literature, we have selected C. perfringens isolates with alpha toxin, NetB, CPB2, and TPL 
for our challenge studies. We randomly divided birds into two groups where n is equal to 25 per group and we selected high protein diet as a predisposing factor for our challenge model where we changed protein from 20 to 28 percent at the time of challenge. These are our timelines of the trial. At day 0 we placed the birds and started feed with 20% of protein up to day 18 and day 19 we have done feed withdrawal for 20 hours followed by protein change to 28% at day 20 and C perfusion challenge twice daily for 3 days and C perfusion was given in feed and media ratio 1 is to 1 and day 23rd we have done sampling and trial end we have collected samples for histopathology which include adrenum, jejunum and ileum and intestinal content for metagenomics. For results, the most common clinical sign observed was brown foamy fecal droppings as shown in the picture and there was no mortality observed in both the groups throughout the timeline of the trial. We were able to produce a necrotic enteritis in challenged birds. About 86% of the birds were affected as shown in the bar graph. We scored birds based on necrotic enteritis lesions as shown in the picture were normal as 0, while 1 or 2 necrotic foci scored as 1, and locally extensive necrosis of villi scored as 2, while a diffuse necrosis of intestines as scored 3. We have concluded a subclinical and clinical broiler chicken model of NE was successfully developed by exposing birds to high protein diet followed by C perfusion challenge. Our second objective is to study the changes in intestinal microbiome associated with C. perfusion infection. We have performed metagenomics analysis by amplicon sequencing on the samples which we have collected in our objective 1 trial. So total samples we had n is equal to 30 and we divided each into n is equal to 10 and first category of healthy birds where no C. perfusion challenge was given while uh, the birds which has only histopathology lesions add subclinical and the birds which has both gross and histopathology lesions as clinical category. We have extracted genomic DNA on those intestinal contents of each category followed by 16S rRNA PCR and amplicon sequencing followed by library preparation and in final step we have performed sequencing by MySeq Illumina platform. Data generated was analyzed in Genius Prime software followed by statistical analysis. Plotted a major bacterial families identified in the genome of control, subclinical and clinical group of chickens. We were able to detect 256 different species of bacteria, while greater than 20 bacterial major families. We observed Lactobacillus I and Oscillatory Phytidaceae were high in our control birds, while going down in necrotic enteritis affected birds. Similarly, Clostridiaceae and Enterobacteriaceae high in are necrotic enteritis challenge birds and very low in our control birds. In visualization of data, we perform principal component analysis and we can see the clear clustering in each category. Here in control, subclinical and clinical. Similarly, in each category, the arrows which are lying close to each other represents the flora similarity in each sample. For overview, we have plotted a bar graph of three representative samples from each category and we can see a clear pattern of progression of disease in these necrotic enteritis affected birds. If we see Electrobacillus I, which is around 60% in our control birds, which is going down to 20% in our subclinical affected birds and less than 20% in our clinically affected birds. Similarly, Cyanobacteriaceae, which is around 20% in our control birds, coming down to 5% in our subclinically affected birds and completely vanishing in, our, in clinically affected birds. For Clostridiaceae, which is around 1-2% to in our control birds, is increasing to 50-60% to in necrotic enteritis affected birds. And it seems like Enterobacteriaceae, which is around less than 1% in our control birds, going up to 20% in our necrotic enteritis affected birds. So we have concluded from our objective two, significant changes in the intestinal microbiome were observed with the development of necrotic enteritis. Normal microflora mainly consisted of Lactobacillus I, Cyanobacteriaceae, Peptostreptococci, and Oscillotrario physidae. Infected bird had considerably decreased Lactobacillus I and increased Clostridiaceae and Enterobacteriaceae. 
The dysbiosis was more severe in birds with clinical infection compared to subclinical. So for the future direction, we are trying to develop new any control strategies using new vaccine delivery systems and formulation together with healthy intestine microbiome. And we want to explore the host microbial interaction using advanced techniques as any pathogenesis is not clear yet. With this, I would like to acknowledge my supervisor, Dr. Susanta Gomez, for his supervision and our research group for conducting animal trials. I would like to acknowledge our funding agencies, that is Poultry Science Cluster 3, which is a Canadian agriculture partnership, includes Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada, Canadian Poultry Research Council, and Chicken Farmers of Saskatchewan. With this, thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, please type them in the chat, or you can email me directly on the mentioned email. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Hamlada. Thank you for your presentation. Great presentation. Again, folks, if you have any uh, questions, I invite you to put them in the question and answer uh, section. I see that one has just come in. Um, was only one dose or concentration used for the challenges? Uh uh, for the challenges, we use the same concentration for the of the C perfringent. Uh, if I'm getting this qu uh, question right, so we used uh, 15 to 16 hour culture of C perfringent, and every time it's one is to 10 to the nine CV CFU uh, per bird. But yes, as we are mixing in the feed and media ratio, so we cannot say how much a bird is eating. Though we calculated the amount of feed based on how much a bird is eating. And based on that, we have uh, challenged the birds, calculate the feed and media ratio, like amount equal. Right. Um, next question is, did you find any change in the microbial flora in birds with, with the special diet program before the challenge? I assume the control birds were fed a normal diet. Uh, see, uh, in uh, uh, this, I mentioned like uh, we have done protein change both in our control as well as in our uh, C. perfusion challenge bird. So day 20th, we changed the feed in controls too. So just by giving them a protein diet of 28% uh, in controls, there are no change in flora. While along with C. perfusion and protein, there's a change in uh, microbiome. All so right. we did change in both, yeah. Great. So I wondered when you were doing that, your model, you had 20 hours of feed withdrawal, you know, when you changed from 20 to 28 hours. Yeah. Is that an important, to me, that seems like that's an important part of setting yeah. them up. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's a good question. Like uh, uh, every time when we challenge, uh, we do feed withdrawal for like uh, sometime 18, 20 hours. So it's necessary because so that their gut is kind of empty and uh, while uh, water excess is full, ad liptum all the time. So when we challenge first thing in the morning, like our challenge is morning evening. So when they eat uh, that uh, super fringent contaminated feed. So I think it helps uh, in the better colonization in the intestine and help to produce the lesions and uh, necrotic enteritis. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, we have uh, just a couple more questions, uh, a couple more minutes, folks. So if you have any questions, please uh, put them in there. I'm also curious about when you do, uh, you know, look at the gut microbiome, you found 56 species, I think, in there. Um, my sense is that there's probably even more species than that, uh, but we just can't, we don't have the, the ability to measure them yet. Um, can you just talk about perhaps there's something in there that we don't even know that could be changing? Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, in results, I showed only the major uh, bacterial species, uh, the families which are changing. So there are so many unclassified bacteria, like which are like, there is no reference for them. So these are around, I think, five to 6% in each of the samples we do have. So we don't know how to do them uh, right now, though, like I think with advanced techniques, like the, if we just detect gene because they are unculturable, we cannot detect, but um, if we find a better reference, if more research is done, I think that might be one thing which we can do for future, I guess. For sure, it's to, uh, there's a whole area of research and I know that's going on about culturing those, those yeah. species for sure. So very interesting work. Thank you so much, Hamlada.